Thank you, Abraham. You spoke earlier of getting glimpses of the vortex. And one of the things I really uh, know is in my vortex is expanding my ability to perceive love. And because I know love is. Love always is. And sometimes I see it, and sometimes I don't. And one day I was doing my grocery shopping, and there was a woman walking toward me um, with a stroller, and I looked into the baby's face, and I was just stunned with the beauty of this child. And I turned to his mother, and I put my hand on my heart, and I said, you must be so proud to be his mother. And she put her hand on her heart, and I just got, like, blown away. I felt like the Grinch. My heart expanded three sizes. And I could perceive love through her experience in a way that I had never felt it in my own life. Let's say that differently. Because I was focused upon her child, and because there had been so many thought pathways that she had created with her child and with her own inner being and with the inner being of her child. So there was a whole lot already going on there. And since it's your intention to be finding that resonance, and since you so often do, you just had this perfect combining convergence of pathways that felt like more than what you usually feel. But we don't want to put the emphasis on what they've got going on because you could just as easily, if you're in an ornery mood, run into somebody who's fighting with their kids <laughs> because law of attraction matches you up to whatever's going on. So start with your original premise to us because your original premise feels flawed to us in this sense. You made it sound like you need someone else in order to reach your full capacity for love. And we want to say there is love in the feeling of satisfaction. But when there's more momentum in it, which is what focusing upon specifics does, then it just feels like more because the energy is moving faster. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So we want you to feel the expansiveness of love. Let's not just make love one frequency. Let's make it a vibration that as the momentum of that vibration increases, then the feeling of it is more within you. Esther really likes watching her basketball team from San Antonio on the television, but she loves even more being in the arena because there are more who have converged with thoughts about that. Yes, like here. <laughs> like here. Yeah. A friend of mine said, bucket list. Bucket list is wonderful. This cruise and visiting the Greek islands was on my bucket list. But my friend suggested having a bucket list of emotions and allowing ourselves to focus on what, what we want to feel uh, I want to feel fascinated. I want to feel exhilarated. I want to feel enthusiastic. Well, we've been talking with you that way from the beginning. In fact, we're talking about that today, that if you're choosing your thoughts, not because of their mental content or because of the curriculum of them or because of the impressiveness of them, or even under the flawed premise that you're going to put thoughts together and use them in a powerful way, because you're not the one that puts the power in the thought. Law of attraction is the one that puts the power in thought. So if you really understand yourself as a step three creator, then you are someone who cares mostly, in fact, maybe even singularly about how you feel. Because then you hold yourself steadily in the receiving mode and then all the seeds that you've planted can move swiftly into your experience. Yes. And powerful and wonderful in different ways. One of the things that is most delightful, you are most delighted by, and we are most delighted in seeing you be delighted by it, is the convergence of many things in your vortex being realized by you simultaneously. Because while you feel that you put them there singularly, individually, through this experience, through this issue, through this incident, through this focus, they have become cooperative components with each other. 
They've worked all of their bugs out and law of attraction has smoothed all their edges off and has made them powerful and brilliant and beautiful and ready for your reception. And so when you focus, and this goes back to what we were talking about with our friend a little earlier, when your mind is quiet, then you have access. But when you are without resistance and focused, then you can actually summon the particular details from your vortex that you would like to experience in any moment in time. That's when you really begin to feel your invincibility, not so different than pulling from a buffet, all the things that you would like to put on your plate in a moment of time. And don't you have those experiences where Esther says, she doesn't mean this word in any literal or human defined sense. She will say the magic is here. She can just feel it's one of those moments when there's going to be surprise and delight and surprise and delight and surprise and delight and surprise and delight, just piling in on top of each other. And that's when she knows she's tuned in, but she also feels like the most blessed person who ever experienced life because she knows that that flowing in is because of the focus, not just of her, but of all the cooperative components that have been gathered. Don't you like realizing that everyone who has ever been in physical form is aware of you and has some relationship with you? Don't you like knowing that there is no subject that you could focus upon with caring and no resistance that wouldn't just flood into your mind in a full and powerful way? Don't you like knowing the infinite intelligence that you have access to? And don't you want to experience as much of it as you can stand in every moment in time? And so what we talk about all day, every day, as we play with you is how to prepare yourself for those sorts of modes of reception. And so it's no coincidence that you, one who is deliberately seeking love would rendezvous with two people that are experiencing pure love, two people, one in a stroller and one pushing it who have no resistance in that moment in time whatsoever. And if they were not, if that was not where they were in that moment of time, they would not have rendezvoused with you. In other words, you get to take the credit or the responsibility. You want to call it blame sometimes, we don't. <laughs> but you get to take the credit or the responsibility for each and everything that you rendezvous with because no one creates in your experience. You are only rendezvousing with others who are like you, you see. And, oh, and so by caring about how you feel, we think that that is a really good way to approach all this. So you're going to visit Athens and there are many things that you know about that are there. You've heard about them. You've read about them. You've seen them in pictures that you may want to see. And so we get it that you want to see it and you want to photograph it and you want to send it home and you want to carve in the bottom of it. Don't I was here. <laughs> well, we, get how you want to participate with it in that way. But you also want to be you in this time and space reality, observing something from your now perspective and feeling it from your now perspective. And you might even want to walk some pathways with those energies that walked those pathways before. You might want to be guided by someone who likes to visit, but hardly ever has an open vessel like you through which they can visit. Mm -hmm. You might like some true insights from those who were part of those times. And oh, it covered a very broad span of time, much more than archeologists are even letting you know. You might want to walk in your present day with those who walked in the past who are walking with you in your present day. So whose present day is this really? Do you get to claim it only for yourself or is all that has lived who has walked in past present in past days when they're walking with you now, is it your present presence or is it theirs or is it both? Is it a rendezvousing? And oh, you got to know. You got to know there's a whole lot of excitement over you being there. Cool. 
This is a really good time for a segment of refreshment. 